trouble coming out of the tropics on this Wednesday. 100 degree heat from Texas all the way up towards Tennessee. And a change to winter looming in the west and the north. For this edition of Forecast Lab, I will be taking a break from the cameras. Hopefully we'll return to that on Friday. I am a little bit short on time to do this program, but we will focus on the meteorology as we usually do. Hurricane Fiona, a Category 4 storm, it is moving north, and we're not expecting that to affect the coastal U.S. There's the official forecast track for Fiona. Passing west of Bermuda, back on Monday, we were looking at a 62-mile distance from Bermuda. And for today, we're looking at 123 miles. So there's been a slight westward shift. And up in Canada, they have steered that away from St. John to the western part of Newfoundland and eastern Nova Scotia. And we can see that on the official forecast graphic. It will pass Bermuda as a Category 3 storm or above and gradually weaken into lower end hurricane strength as it reaches Nova Scotia and then a tropical storm across Labrador. I probably spoke too soon. There will be some effects on the East Coast, but that will be limited to rip tides and heavy seas. So if you're going to be in the coastal areas into the weekend, definitely be careful. Strong reinforcing cold front coming south out of the Dakotas. Temperatures up there in the 50s. 64 at Minneapolis at this hour, 68 at Omaha, and still 83 at Chicago, but that northwest wind is bringing in much more brisk air. Some of that cold air is reaching Raton and Clayton, New Mexico. South of that, some very warm temperatures up in the 90s, and we've even got 101 at the hour at Memphis. Let's take a look at the forecast highs just briefly. You can see that it's going to be a hot day from Oklahoma City to Little Rock to Memphis, down to Jackson and up to Paducah. Temperatures spanning 94 to 100, and all of these red plots will break records for the date. We're going to take a look at some more of these going into the next week in just a little bit. Let's head back to that surface map. Some of the cold air moving into the central Rockies there, 50s at the hour in Wyoming. And with upslope conditions, a very humid air mass, you see those dew points up there in the 40s. That means a lot of extensive cloud cover and a little bit of rain up north of that frontal boundary. This is isentropic lift occurring north of that cold front. Some Pacific air moving into California. Very impressive cool weather. 64 up there around Sacramento and 69 at Fresno. A strong cold front moving into the southwestern U.S. Now this time of year, the terrain in the desert southwest is very warm, and that's going to mean significant erosion of the cold air from the bottom up. So not much of that is going to make it through the Rockies. Most of that's going to be up north. So not much relief there for Arizona and New Mexico, but they are getting that plume of moisture from the remains of an old tropical storm, and that's surging northward into the Four Corners area. You can see plenty of rain there from Phoenix all the way up towards Salt Lake City and around Riverton, Wyoming. Up to the north, there's that 1026 millibar high driving that cold air into the north central U.S. and taking a trip up into Alaska. Cold weather extensive 20s and 30s. This is definitely a change from even earlier this week. Extensive cloud cover in that area, the Gulf of Alaska becoming stormy as we usually see it in wintertime. And up there in the Canadian high Arctic, we're starting to see some freezing and frozen precipitation types. There's the appearance of freezing rain. Now there is still some warm air lurking down to the south, southwest of Yellowknife, temperatures up to the 60s, but abundant cold air, especially in the Hudson Bay region. And going back there, there's an occlusion moving through Quebec, and that's going to be heading northeast and gradually falling into this occlusion graveyard. And I believe that wraps up our surface analysis. Let's take a look at the temperature extremes coming up over the next week. For today, quite hot 
Temperatures peaking at 102 at Memphis. For Thursday, tomorrow, a long sliver of warm air from Virginia all the way down to Texas. That'll be ahead of that cold front, which is moving to the southeast. Temperatures well up into the 90s and even near 100 at Waco. Friday's weather map shows the heat confined to Florida and Texas, 101 at Waco, so the cold air not making very much progress south in that region, and it'll mostly be heading into the eastern part of the country. Saturday's weather map shows the heat continuing in the Arklatex region, temperatures in the upper 90s. A little bit more seasonable for Sunday. No problem spots on Monday starting the new week. And on Tuesday, seasonable temperatures. So I think we're done with the heat waves for the next week or two. One of our big items of concern is down in the tropics. You can see around the Windward Islands, we're looking for development. If that takes hold, that's going to become Tropical Storm Hermine. Now that is a few days off. But we're expecting favorable development conditions out there in the Caribbean. The five-day outlook, yeah, you can see what they're going for right there. And the GFS, looks like within about two to three days, we should have a closed circulation there and maybe the start of a tropical storm. No real strong development until it moves into the Western Caribbean. Then north of Honduras around next Tuesday, we could see some rapid development in that region. You can see that the GFS bottom set out at about 936 millibars near Cancun and then brings the storm into the Gulf. Now, as I said back on Monday, the models are not going to be accurate this far out, but I think there is the signal for there to be something in the Gulf. We don't know where. It could be a storm way down here affecting Mexico, or it could be a storm recurving across Cuba and up towards Florida or maybe it even exits to the north. We just don't really know at this stage, but we're going to have to circle back to this on Friday and take another look, and then again on Monday. And just to show you the GFS forecast there, it's got it stagnating there in the central gulf and then pulling up into the Pensacola area around October 2nd. Let's take a look at the ECMWF. Now, I don't have all the frames for the ECMWF in just yet the 12Z run is not finished but you can see they're going for a similar solution a little bit more of a curvature bringing a storm into Florida so I think it's safe to say we're going to see some impacts in the Gulf Coast region in about a week to two weeks. There is the integrated water vapor transport map we haven't really looked at this since last winter this is a cold season type product, and it shows us where the most moisture is concentrated over a period of time. And you can see that precipitable water plume up there in the Arizona and Utah region. And if we go forward, you're going to see that disperse into the central Rockies. So a lot of areas in that region will be getting precip. Definitely needed. We have this other area out there in the eastern U.S., but that's associated with the frontal boundary. And looking for plumes of moisture from the tropics, really none to be found except off the coast of British Columbia. That's going to be pretty far out there. But at some point, we're going to see these plumes working into the western U.S., like you see right there. And we're going to be right back into rainy season in the western U.S. And you can see the IVT product picking up on the forecast track of that hurricane so we know that this is coming from the gfs and sure enough so we'll we'll see what happens with that next week late late this weekend early next week that's probably when we'll have a better handle on what will happen with that storm and we'll just quickly take you through the precipitable water charts you can see that plume of moisture there in the northern rockies gets pulled rapidly eastward by the prevailing westerlies, basically advecting that from west to east. And also, there's a fresh incursion of polar air moving into the northeastern U.S. So the cold front located right there. And back there in Texas, obviously, this is recurving north as a warm front. So a little bit of frontal overrunning 
upslope and isotropic lift. So let's see, going into the weekend, moisture streaming into Texas, interacting with that quasi-stationary frontal boundary, and looks like it is coming south now for Sunday. Finally getting that push of cooler, milder air into the South Central U.S. for midweek. And there's that hurricane looming, lurking down there in the Gulf. You can see that that is detracting from the return flow. Usually we have moisture streaming northward. Not in this case. We've got wraparound. So this is going to be an offshore flow pattern. And that will keep Texas dry through much of the week. And we're just going to ignore the hurricane and pay attention to the other patterns. Another outbreak of fresh air coming south. That's a really good push, 1030 millibar high. And it looks like we're generating more and more cold air. So we are entering a true autumn pattern. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I'll leave you with some footage once again from San Antonio. Thanks to Greg. I'm not really sure what part of town that is, but uh, I don't know. Kind of looks like 151, 410, somewhere in that area. All right, so we'll be back on Friday, and we'll update you on that hurricane in the Gulf. And hopefully we'll be back on camera again. We'll see how it goes. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.